Hey, welcome to Skills with Phil. Recently, I've been getting a lot of requests for more beginner related content. So today, we're gonna to be looking at a few different skills and drills for beginner riders. Most of these skills and drills can be learned in just a simple parking lot before taking them to the trail. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into it. This is called a track stand. It's essentially bouncing in place without moving. Most parking lots and roads are not completely flat. You can find a section of parking lot that has a slight uphill slope and then try to hold yourself in place just by using a little forward force on your front pedal. If you're finding a freestanding track stand to be difficult, try bouncing against a curb. You can also use your front brake on your bike to help hold you in place. Learning to track stand will help teach you basic balance. This is especially useful when navigating slow technical terrain out on the trails. If you ever plan on riding clipless pedals, this is something you'll definitely want to master before moving on. This next one may look silly at first, but it's actually quite useful for becoming a more fluid rider. You see, most riders are too stiff when they ride their bikes. Getting used to using the full range of movement of our body while riding our bike will help us absorb the terrain out on the trails. Expanding on that, it's useful knowing how to shift our body weight around to maintain balance. A few things you can try on your own is to see how far over you can lean on your bike without losing balance. Once you get good at that, for an additional challenge, try removing one of your legs and bring it over to the opposing side. What this teaches is how to get loose while also helping you understand how your bike and body work together. This next drill is what I personally call tire splitting. When turning, our back wheel does not follow the same path as our front wheel. This is especially evident when making turns in technical terrain. This is because our front wheel needs a larger turning radius than our back wheel. A good way to get used to this is to place two objects about a foot apart. Here I'm using some rocks I found on the side of the road. The goal of this exercise is to get our wheels on opposing side of the rock without touching them when making turns. If you need an additional challenge, add a third rock and see how many different ways you can get your wheels around the rocks. You may find this rather tricky at first, but as you keep practicing it, it will become second nature. In my opinion, this is one of the most overlooked skills, because most riders learn this without even realizing it. Most mountain bike trails have at least a few really awkward tight turns, and as we saw in the last trail, our front wheel does not take the same path as our back wheel. Practicing really awkward tight turns in a parking lot can be a great way to help improve your skills. While this may look easy, I actually found this to be quite the challenge. The idea is to be able to complete tight turns without picking up your front or back wheel. You really have to focus on swinging wide with your front wheel before cutting in so your back wheel will clear the turn. Be sure to practice this in both directions. I personally found it easier to turn towards my left than I did my right, so that means I should probably be practicing right turns more often. Once you get good at making tight turns by keeping your wheels on the ground, you can then go back and try to make tight turns by picking up your wheels. This next skill is called ratcheting. Sometimes, for whatever reason, we can't fit in a full pedal stroke. This could happen when there's a stump or rock on the ground that we might clip with our pedal, or it could be the gear we're stuck in is just too hard. By repeatedly backpedaling and punching our drivetrain, we can continue to move forward without a full pedal stroke. It's not often that you need to ratchet, but it's quite useful to use in technical terrain. The basic front wheel lift is one of the most important skills for beginner riders to learn. In most cases, as long as we get our front wheel over an object, our back wheel will follow. The best place to practice this is on a curb. Approach the curb at a perpendicular angle and at a slow speed. Quickly lift your front wheel to get it up and onto the curb. To do this, you do not have to know how to wheelie or manual. We're not trying to balance on our wheel, just simply get it up and onto the curb. Once your front wheel is on top of the curb, as long as you move your weight forward, your back wheel should come with you. But if you want to assist your back wheel onto the curb, you can spring upwards and point your toes. I find that when I do this, I'm leaning forwards and that the majority of my weight is on the handlebars. You can use this same technique to get up fairly large objects. Just be sure that in the process, you don't bash your chain ring. So there you go. Those are five skills and drills for beginner riders. If this is your first time watching a Skills with Phil video, I'd love to have you subscribe and also check out some of my other videos. 
Personally, I'd recommend starting with my How to Turn and Line Choice playlist. In those videos, you'll find a lot of information and subtle tricks about turning that you probably didn't know. I'll leave a link to that playlist at the end of this video. As always, my name is Phil Metz. Thanks for playing bikes with me today. Now I'll see you guys next time.